we're going to be talking about uh, lying today. Um, so uh, when I talk about something, for instance, if I'm going to be talking about a bird and I say the word bird, you kind of have a mental image of what I'm going to be talking about or the kind of thing I have in mind when I say a bird. So you're going to be picturing something with wings and feathers. It's probably going to be kind of small. They lay eggs, they can fly and they skip leg day because they have these twiggy little tiny legs. Um, so examples of these kinds of birds that you think of pretty automatically are things like blue jays or ravens. Um, and you know that these are kinds of birds. Um, there are some other kinds of birds that don't exactly meet these criteria, but you still identify them as birds. So an example of birds that don't have all of these properties are things like ostriches, which are too big, so they don't really meet the small criteria and they run, they don't fly. And uh, this ostrich clearly here does not skip leg day. It's got very beefy legs and I'm kind of jealous of. Um, and then on the other hand, we have something like a penguin, which is kind of fat and a little too tall to be your typical small sort of bird. They swim and they don't fly. And uh, this penguin here very clearly does not have any legs. So uh, Forrest Gump would be very supportive. Um, <clears throat> So those are uh, some kinds of birds. And so if I tell you to name a bird, you're usually most likely going to pick a kind of bird that has the greatest number of the features that you normally think of when you hear the word bird. And so that kind of points to the idea that you have a mental construct in, uh, in your head of what makes a bird so birdy. And those things all sort of culminate into what's called maybe a prototypical bird. And so the notion of prototypes is very important. Um, and so prototypes can be applied to a lot of things and they don't all have to be physical things like birds. Uh, they can also be abstract concepts, um, things like vacation or murder, which I have illustrated here with a nice little gif of Tom and Jerry um, and their special guest Spike all feeding each other with household items. Uh, so we could ask, is this a prototypical murder? Yes or no, who knows? Um, but they can also be applied to things like lies. And so when we think about lying, we can ask, what does it mean to tell a lie? And what sort of characteristics does a lie have? And when we look at these kinds of things in uh, comparison to prototypes, this is a sort of specific field of what's called semantics. Um, and so when we look at what a lie means or what things need to be true for something to be a lie, um, one important part that we can usually think of pretty easily is that whatever information is being conveyed needs to be untrue. And on top of that, it's pretty important for the speaker to believe or know, or in some way be aware that the information that's being conveyed is false or that the speaker needs to believe that it is. Um, so that's something that we might consider important about lying. Um, the next thing is maybe that you're intending to deceive whoever you're speaking to. So if we consider these kind of the important features of a lie, we might ask, are some of them more important than others? And what does a prototypical lie look like versus a non-prototypical lie? <laughs> okay, so we start with our prototypical lie. Um, we might have a situation like the following um, where I don't have any money, but I want candy. And so I decide to steal a candy bar from a store. And when I get home, my mom asks where I got the candy and I tell her I bought it so that I don't get in trouble. Um, so now I'm going to ask, people to type in the chat how they would rate the scale on one to five, um, where one is honest aid and five is pants on fire. I say in this situation, did I lie to mama? And I'm seeing lots of fives in the chat. I would agree because this is a pretty clear cut case. I have all of the features of a lie here. Um, and so this is pretty cut and dry. I lied to mama, right? Um, but we can look at other kinds of lies and see if we take away some of those features, do we still consider these lies? Or to what degree we consider them to be a lie? So in the next scenario, I'm about to leave home to go to a bar I haven't visited in many years. And my Mormon roommate who doesn't approve of drinking asks where I'm going. To avoid a lecture when I get home, I say I'm going to IHOP. And when I arrive at my destination, I discover that the bar was torn down and replaced with an IHOP. Um, so now in the chat, go ahead and post, did I lie to my roommate, one to five? Uh, while you are doing that, um, you can see that the information I gave my roommate is untrue, but I believed uh, the, the information I gave was true. 
but I believe that the information was untrue. I didn't happen to know I was going to an IHOP, but I said I was um, because I was trying to trick my roommates. So I still intended to deceive them. And I believed I was saying something false, but I was actually saying something true. So is this a lie? Uh, people think, uh, still think so quite a bit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so now another instance, I could say, uh, I'm going to a party at Alex's house on a school night and my mom asks where I'm going. And since I'm going to pass by a movie theater on my way to Alex's house, I say, I'm going by the movie theater. But on my way to the party, uh, there's a road closure and I have to take an alternate route that doesn't pass the movie theater on my way to Alex's house. So from one to five, did I lie to my mom? Uh, and while people are putting those, <laughs> um, right, the information I gave my mom was untrue, but I thought I was telling my mom something true because I was going to pass a movie theater. And so I technically said, I am going to go by the movie theater. That would have been true if I had, if things had gone according to plan. Unfortunately, there was a road closure I didn't know about. And so I ended up not going by the movie theater, but I was still planning to deceive my mother. Um, so these were lower. That looks like it probably averages about a three. Okay. So this is less of a lie than our big prototypical lie or uh, where I accidentally went to IHOP. Okay. So now if we have another scenario, uh, my coworker hosted a catastrophically bad dinner party at their house. And as I leave, uh, I can see that they're not happy about how the party went and they feel bad that everyone had a terrible night. I say, this was fun. We should do this more often. I don't expect them to believe me, but I want to be polite and encouraging to the host. So did I lie to the host one to five? <clears throat> okay. And people are giving this a lot lower scores, right? So here I'm saying something that's not true, right? I didn't have fun. It was a terrible party. And, uh, I, I am painfully aware that the party was terrible uh, and I'm not even trying to convince the host that I had a good time and that we should do this more often because the party was terrible. Um, so there's no intent to deceive there. Um, and this looks to have gotten the lowest rating. So when we look at what's the most important part of a lie based on the ratings you gave, right? If we have all of these, it's pretty clear, strong five, that's obviously a lie. If the information is untrue, but I believed it was, um, if the information ends up being true, but I believed it was false and I was trying to deceive somebody, uh, that still got pretty high ratings, fours and fives for most people. So that averaged about a four. Um, if I believed the information was true, and so basically I intended to deceive somebody and I said something that I thought was true and I just ended up being wrong, that's still pretty clearly a lie. And if I'm not trying to deceive anybody, uh, people gave that the lowest rating, I think it's probably averaging around a two. So it looks like as decided by this group, uh, the most important part about a lie is that you intend to deceive somebody, whether or not you just got something wrong or you accidentally told the truth, um, but still intending to be deceitful. Uh, the most important part of a lie is actually trying to fool somebody. So um, <clears throat> that's sort of the notion of prototypes and what it means to uh, lie. So uh, thanks, everybody, to Tim Roth. Uh, and that's all I have.